Welcome to The Entrepreneurial Lawyer, How to Grow Your Law Firm, a podcast for managing and growing your legal practice. Lexicon CEO Dan Cuneo and Director of Legal Operations and Training Sarah Rutan Bates discuss how to make your law practice profitable in the modern legal industry. Hello and welcome to this episode of The Entrepreneurial Lawyer. I'm your host, Dan Cuneo. Along with me is my loquacious oh. co-host, Sarah Rutan Bates. You thought about that one, didn't you? It just comes naturally. Do you have a list in your phone? I can't tell you that. Oh, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your password. <laughs> Call your wife, your executive assistant. <laughs> uh, hey, everyone. Excited to be back. I feel like it's been a while since we've been in the studio. Yeah, we have a phenomenal uh, couple guests with us right here. We do. And a, a topic that's uh, interesting and near and dear to both of us. It, I, I think it's a, it's a game changer. We have Susan Baltz and Ann Brocklin from Bar Association Metropolitan St. Louis. Hello, ladies. How are you? Great. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for joining. I'm glad to be here. If you don't mind, for our listeners, could you each tell us a little bit about yourselves, kind of a little bit of your background and, and your position over at the Bar Association Metropolitan St. Louis? So um, my name is Ann Brockland. I am the president-elect of BAMSL. Uh, will be president in May. I'm a trial attorney. I've got a firm with, um, I'm partners with to other lawyers, it's Casey Devotee in Brooklyn. Um, I do all plaintiff trial work, um, uh, mostly medical malpractice. Hi, I'm Susan McCourt Baltz. I have been the executive director here at BAMSL since uh, January 1st, 2021. So started in um, the middle of the chaos and have been here a little, about 15 months. I, uh, my background is in legal marketing. I started at a small law firm here in St. Louis as a marketing director in 1998. I uh, then went to a large, one of the larger law firms here in town that has a national presence and then um, went to a legal services provider. During that time, I also uh, did some marketing consulting for law firms and was the chair of the Legal Marketing Association of St. Louis and um, was the chair, did some, the chair of the Justice for All Ball. So I've been involved with the legal industry for 25 years, but I, I do not have a JD. I have an MBA. So um, bring a little bit different perspective uh, from the bar world as I was not a member, but I've been a sustaining partner. I've done CLEs for BAMSL in the past and um, kind of have a different relationship with the, with the bars growing up through the bar, through the legal industry. Wonderful. Thank you. And congrats on the election. Oh, thank you. Um, ladies, let, let me ask your opinion. So I know that Dan and I have talked with a lot of attorneys and it, it was a little surprising to us how many do not participate or belong to um, local associations where they can build connections, uh, get to know other attorneys, attend events, right? Like CLEs and um, social events and whatnot. But from your standpoint, you know, what is the benefit for joining associations, one such as BAMSL? For me, when I was starting out as a young lawyer in St. Louis, it was vital because I'm not from St. Louis. So I didn't know any of the lawyers in town. I don't have family here. Um, And so it was really a way to get to know people in the profession. And that's all networking is, right? It's it's showing up and talking to people. And so once you kind of start... For me, that's that's why I started. It's because I wanted to meet people, and if you're going to generate business, um, that's that's the f- step one. As I've kind of progressed into you know my career, uh, it's it's taken on a different role. Um, I think that, well, I mean, obviously, bar associations are the central point of engagement, really, for lawyers. Um, and, and St. Louis is a, is a big city with a, a, a small town feel. So there's nothing more important than just being able to get together with your colleagues. Right. But certainly at the beginning of your career, if you are looking to build business in St. Louis in this, you know, kind of big city, small town feel, you have to get to know people and BAMSL is the place to do it. 
you're so spot on. And I was up in New York for a legal week a few weeks ago, and I had the privilege of being invited to the New York Bar Association's unveiling of their new president. And it was such a cool ceremony and, and met a lot of well-known attorneys, really was very nostalgic for me, brought me back to my days of practicing law and just studying and just hearing and seeing these actual attorneys that I've read cases or that we've seen on the news. But for me, and, and where, where I'm going with this is it, it can be intimidating at times when you're a new attorney or you're new to the area and you don't know anyone. What are some good tips that you have for, for networking? Because I agree with you. Networking is so vital when you're looking to grow and expand your, your business. Of course, networking is not only how you build your business, but it's a source of referrals. It's a source of, you know, at some point in your career, you're probably going to be looking for a job and um, it's reaching out to other other attorneys in other industries and other positions and other areas that you may be interested in pursuing later on. Um, another another big benefit to joining the Bar Association is we have most of the judges in the region are members or participate in some capacity. So for especially the young lawyers, there's not a lot of opportunity for them to sometimes interact with, mingle with, network with judges. And so um, we do have judges on our board. We have judges at our events. We have the Bench and Bar Conference, which typically draws about 50 judges in the area. And so it gives opportunity to meet them on a more personal basis. Um, and then just the collegiality within the profession. That, that's important too, because I know, especially for newer attorneys and, and even experienced attorneys, presenting in front of a judge can be somewhat stressful. But when you have interactions with them outside of court, you really get to know the judge. And I think it would help not only in your practice of law, but also in how you uh, present certain cases. It, it would help out with that that comfort zone in approaching the judge or articulating certain arguments in front of the court. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And at least in St. Louis, the judges are very involved in Bansel. I mean, I've I've met most of the judges that I know through my work with Bansel. And um, you know, it's not it's not just showing up to happy hours uh would to answer your question about networking. I mean, you really need to um, get involved in various projects. Um, we have a lot of pro bono opportunities and, and it's, it's those opportunities where you are working with someone uh, with a common goal. And that's really, good. those are connections that you're going to make is, is working on projects with someone and then the rest will follow. So ladies, this may seem like a silly question, but how does one sign up uh, to be a member with BAMSL? It, it really is as easy as going to our website, yeah. signing up. But, but that's the easy part. If anyone were hesitant or didn't know what the value was, I would encourage them to come to an event. We're always looking to grow our membership. I think where we, you know, we have the young lawyers group that's very vibrant, very driven, very active. They do a lot for the community. There's a lot of community um, events. We do sandwich making every other Thursday. We do food distributions. We do motion for kids. We hand out uh, holiday presents for children who are impacted by the justice system. We have a mock trial that just ended this past weekend. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to get involved, not in a legal capacity, but in a capacity to help the community at large. So I would encourage anyone who's considering it to come to some of those events. Come to, there's a, a lot of free events. If anyone was interested in joining and wanted to come to a CLE, we'd absolutely waive the fee to come to the CLE. So, you know, test the waters, get involved at, at, at the free level, and then jump in. The technical part of it is just to sign up online. You know, one of the other benefits that I would think is is not just growing your business and, and the referrals, but also talking to colleagues to see what type of software they use, what type of services they use, because you can bounce ideas and suggestions and know what works, what doesn't work, and it allows you to be even more efficient, which at the end of the day will tie into to revenue and potential growth. But at least you you can talk to other colleagues in the industry to know what, what works for them, what doesn't work for them. It's very important. And it's also um, uh, important in different ways for different size firms. So I have a smaller firm 
and um, you know what I need and what might work for me um, might not be the same as our current president, Bob Tommaso, who manages a huge law firm. And so to be able to uh, meet and, and discuss with attorneys that have similar practices, because we have various committees and sections, um, is incredibly helpful. And the CLEs that, that Susan mentioned earlier, I mean, those are part of the lifeline of a, an attorney practicing. Mm-hmm. Not only because in each state they have certain requirements, but there's just so much you can learn from the CLEs. So there's so many benefits. You're getting your CLE credit, you're learning from the substance of the CLE, but then you're also able to network and speak with other attorneys and judges. And you brought up something that I didn't want to forget to talk about is the sustaining partner program. And Lexicon, as you know, is a sustaining partner. And I think that that's a really powerful program as all of our sustaining partners are resources for the legal community. And so um, talking, you know, just the networking and the talking about, you know, what, what software you use, what um, photographer you use, what marketing services you use, any, any sort of that. We have a lot of resources and relationships with different sustaining partners that do pay for a lot of the events that we are able to put on. So they, they do, they do foot the bill for a lot of what we do. And, um, we like to give back to our sustaining partners as well. That's wonderful to hear because it's really a, a two-way street. It's beneficial for the organization, but then there's also many benefits for the attorney, whether they're a sustaining partner of their firm or whether they're there to to learn. But I, I can't think of one thing that would dissuade anybody from really joining any bar association. There's yeah. just so many benefits to I, that. I was going to say just... I mean, even in my knowledge from a, a partnership level, it, it didn't even scratch the surface. You know, I, I think just getting more involved with the community alone, what a what a draw in. Um, but the different abilities to meet people, to learn, to share information, knowledge, resources, it seems like a no-brainer to me. What is the time commitment, uh, would you say, Anne or Susan? Because I, I, I think some attorneys may want to join, but then their hesitation is, oh, I've got to I have these billable requirements I need to meet or I'm just too busy. And, and I, don't, I think, at least in my opinion, it's really what you get out of it is what you put into yeah. it. I mean, you just answered the question, really. <laughs> it would be helpful if, if larger firms uh, would kind of encourage the young lawyers to come because that's how they're going to get business. But there are these billable hour requirements, right? So, you know, it's, there's no time commitment unless you're, you know, president elect or on the exec committee or, or something, but you can pick and choose what you come to and, um, you know, what, how much time you put into it, but there's no question you get the, the more, the most benefit, the more time you put into it. I also think that the other benefit is for even if you're on your own, but especially uh, for these firms to really encourage their associates to join because it it only can fine tune your skills as an attorney. But also when you're having cases against the other side, it, it's not that you're friends, but I, I think that that benefits the client because you're able to work together to come to a solution or to a settlement and not have all these formal requirements where you you have to file the motion, call it up for hearing to where maybe you can just work it out because of the relationship you have with the post and console. Yeah, it's definitely relationship building. And I'll say from, because I've practiced in St. Louis, but also in other states and jurisdictions. And in St. Louis, I mean, we, we have the most collegial bar that I've ever practiced in. So it's a perfect experience to be able to get to know not just people on your side of the V, so to speak, but also your opposing counsel. And it, it just makes everything run more smoothly in your practice. Well, ladies, uh, Dan and I thank you for being here and sharing all of this wonderful information. Attorneys, um, I, I, I think the decision's an easy one. If you are not a part of a local organization such as BAMSL, get out there, research, um, you know, look online, see what events you could attend. You know, as stated, a lot of free events out there. Get more information if you need it before you make the decision. But really seems as if this could be a great, great resource and benefit to 
all different yeah. walks of attorneys. For those listeners who are in the Missouri area, especially St. Louis, Susan, what's the website for BAMSL? www.bamsl.org. Wonderful. BAMSL.org. Please check it out. Wonderful organization. Great benefits. What a wonderful resource, as I'm sure other bar associations are, but BAMSL takes it to the next level. Again, thank you for, for joining us, Susan and Ann, and thank you to those who are tuning in. This is the Entrepreneur Lawyer. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and please rate us a five so we can continue with this podcast and share our wealth and, and knowledge to others. And it's sponsored by Lexicon. Please visit lexiconservices.com. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Entrepreneurial Lawyer, How to Grow Your Law Firm, presented by Lexicon. Lexicon is a legal software and services provider that enables lawyers to do what they do best, practice law. Tune in next time with our hosts and be sure to subscribe and leave your review on your preferred podcast streaming platform or by visiting lexiconservices.com.